interested in winning a double gold award? Proof Awards, the ultimate beverage competition where all judges are beverage buyers, can jumpstart your campaign. Enter the Proof Awards. It's time to get your spirits, wines, and cocktail mixers the attention they deserve. Take advantage of the Proof Awards exposure and marketing program with Food and Beverage Magazine. It's all about putting your bottle into the right hands. Your brands will be tasted and rated by judges that are all beverage buyers for bars, nightclubs, resorts, casinos, liquor stores, big box retail, and many beverage distributors from across the U.S. Enter your spirits, wine, or beverage brand today. Hundreds of categories to choose from. One simple way to sign up. Visit www.proofawards.com. That's www.proofawards.com. And follow the enter portal into our competition. In winning a double gold award? Welcome to Proof Live, where booze brands in the right hands. On a quest for the best tipple and toast with the most exciting and respected bottlings. Competing for the 100 point perfect score century award and the double gold and a spot on the top shelf to be sipped, shaken, stirred, and celebrated. Slide up to the bar with the biggest names in the spirits game as they clink glasses with your hostess, legendary connoisseur Jennifer English, for intimate conversations, live tastings, product launches, and the happiest hour there is. Now, broadcasting live from the commodious confines of the Swanky Proof Saloon, where the liquid elite meet, here is your hostess, the Madam of Manhattans, the Duchess of Daiquiris, the Queen of Conviviality, your hostess, James Beard Award winner, Jennifer English. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Jennifer English. I'm the editor at large of Proof Magazine, and I am coming to you live from Los Angeles, from NFTLA, one of the biggest conferences in the world about the burgeoning world of cryptocurrencies. There's a lot to celebrate, and we say that because in success, you deserve it, and in defeat, you need it. And that is what we think when we think of bubbles, but not just any bubbles. We are celebrating that we have a guest today who is the winner of the 100-point Century Award, the rarest and hardest thing to do in all of spirits is to be this irresistible and consistently good. So let's talk about bubbles. In order to be called a champagne, you have to come and be born in the champagne region of France. There are a few markets around the world where that is not the case, but they are scarce and rare. Everything else is a beautiful sparkling wine, and more and more practitioners of the sparkling wine arts are making incredible 100-point winning wines outside of Champagne. To do so, however, is a feat of rare achievement. And I have to say, as a Champagne lover, I was thrilled to be introduced to Provocativo. And one of the things that's become really um, compelling for me about the category is that we never used to think of sparkling wines as great wines in and of themselves. They were always special occasion wines or they were celebration wines. And that's true. But if you really love bubbles the way I love bubbles, and I love bubbles, if you really love bubbles, you want to eat them with meals. You want to have them as one of the great sips. Because if you don't, I don't actually drink very much, but when I want a sip of something really delicious, it's almost always a, a glass of bubbles. And the Provocativo just knocked me over with its quality and its flavor and its finish and its finesse. And I am thrilled to introduce you to the CEO of Provocativo, Hans Christian Holtz. Hello and thank you. I am so thrilled that I get a chance to say thank you for making this for us. I'm going to guess that you love bubbles almost as much as I do or maybe even more. Of course, I think you're right to the point, Jennifer. Thank you for having me on. And I think, you know, as you say, bubbles is just growing and it's growing from a base of, uh, you know, $31 billion and expected to grow to, you know, $54 billion over the next five years. And I think it's all about, you know, going away from this, you know, special events celebration to become an everyday a celebratory drink because life is important to celebrate. And that's, uh, you know, the background when we developed Rocketivo. And, you know, 
is all about standing out, but also in regards to what you just said, we need to have you know a taste which really appeal uh, to everybody. And uh, we created the Proactivo, and as you said, in regards to champagne, comes from a small area, and Proactivo comes from Spain, is the Cava. Uh, but we focus on the on the on the sparkling uh, segments, and and uh, and also in regards to it's made the same way as champagne. And to your point, yes, you know, there's a lot of places which creates you know some fantastic uh, sparkling wine around the world. Let's talk a little bit about the dream that you had to create the world's great sparkling wine. And I think you've made a really good shot at the claim that you are one of the greatest, if not the greatest sparkling wine in the world. Let's talk about what that dream must have been like, because this is an ancient category. Since Dom Perignon the monk said, come quickly, I'm sipping the stars. And of course, it has a legendary history. And even in my own life, when my own son was born, we borrowed the tradition of touching champagne to the newborn's lips and wishing him a, a lifetime of moments worth celebrating. Our cultural reference point to bubbles is long and storied, and yet you had a beautiful dream that you brought to life. Would you talk about how the dream was born? I think in regards to dreams, you know, I've been in the alcohol uh, business my whole life. And then uh, everything we do actually based is based on analytics. You know, first of all, I love uh, bubbles. And when you saw a category growing as quickly as, as bubbles, I said it needs to be an opportunity to actually create something bigger. And, you know, when you do things, you know, you need to make sure that you're actually creating a brand uh, with a quality, which is then then uh, matching the brand you're creating. And you need to uh, find a way to stand out. And that's why we also know that, you know, bubbles are, you know, much better when they are matured in big bottles. And then we created the, you know, uh, size matters, you know, in and magnum only. And of course, everybody laughs when you say that because you get a lot of things in your head when you're saying size matters. But everybody likes a nicer car, you know, uh, uh, you know, more beautiful partner, a bigger boat and so on. But my, my dream is always based on, you know, first of all, I need to enjoy uh, what I'm promoting. I need to, uh, um, you know, make sure that I'm in something which actually can you know, satisfy the consumer and at the same time be, be profitable. And, uh, you know, we did uh, about, you know, 12 months research on everything uh, on on uh, bubbles. And what surprised me the most is actually better getting back to your point, Jennifer, is that it doesn't stop. The growth just continue. And I was expected yeah. to grow 8.5% every single year. So my dream is actually make sure, you know, uh, that we create uh, a product which is available for everybody at right. a reasonable price point. I want to talk about the large format because you're absolutely right. Connoisseurs have always known that the larger format bottles of bubbles had an enhanced everything about them, about the flavor, about about the way they mature. But I love that you recognize that. And there's something I've never understood, and maybe you can help me. Rarely do we have a celebration or a party where you would need more than one bottle of champagne, just for a toast even. I've always wondered why it wasn't just the standard format to offer in a magnum size for great celebrations, because historically champagne and sparkling wine always was a celebration sip. I love that you've recognized that this is what this is and going to be. Can you talk about the large format? Because that had to have been a provocative choice when you went to your team and said, we're only going to do big and large format. I think it's everybody, everything comes back to analytics. Of course, quality is uh, one which we should all be addressed. The other thing is that if you go into a, a Publix or into a, any kind of a nightclub or uh, going into a restaurant, everything you see is basically 750. And from a competitive point of view, we want to stand out. And it's all about standing out. You need to yeah. be different from the competition. So, you know, quality is one which you already pointed out on. And then, of course, the competition is less. You go in and find, you know, probably 75 different SKUs on the public's <laughs> shelf, but you only find like five magnums. So then, you know, quality and visibility go hand in hand. And then you figure out, let's test it out. So we tested it out and we really saw the takeaway directly that the consumer really engaged with the brand. They, they uh, you know, picked us, uh, you know, in front of, uh, of uh, other, you know, known champagne brands. But, uh, you know, the large formats was all about standing out having a pitch line, which were different from the competition at the same time, take care of quality. I want to speak to the fact that your own connoisseurship um, and expertise in the industry led you to use a wine produced in Spain in the Cava style. Because to my mind, there 
is no other sparkling wine that could compete or excel against a champagne than the one you've chosen. Some of my favorite non-champagne sparklers are Cava's. It really is the gold standard, but you have done something extraordinary within the Cava realm. I'm not saying other uh, things are not delicious. Don't, I'm going to get a lot of fan mail for this one saying, Jennifer, I did it. But the truth is, and, and let's be really honest, this is not a Prosecco kind of thing. This is when you really want to go with a kind of body and elegance and style and finesse and richness and toastiness that you have to go in the direction you did. It's how you got to 100 points and the Century Award. I think it's so important for people to know that not all sparkling wines are created equal and that you really did a lot of homework to develop and create this particular offering. Would you talk to, beyond the analytics, just as someone who loves these products, why this is the case and what makes Cava so great and why this was the right one for you? I think in regards to, you know, you know Cava, you know, it's made the same way uh, champagne is being made. And then, of course, I'm not the, the winemaker. We have, you know, an incredible winemaker called Brianna Cardona. She is the one who makes the magic together with the winery in Spain. And then, you know, we put over small, you know, own palate into the mix. You know, the, the Spanish do their thing. We do our thing. And then we try, try to combine that. And then, of course, when you have a winemaker, which we have in Brianna Cardona, you know, you get a, a fantastic product. And... Getting back to you know uh, champagne and 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 cava, you know they're made the same way. Uh, you know yeah. the, the the champagne is aged for twelve months minimum, and for cava it's 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 uh, it's ten, and you have the second fermentation in the bottle, and it's all the same. And if you look at it and you do a blind tasting like you guys did, you know <laughs> uh, the quality is you know uh, you know as good or even better than uh, a lot of champagnes. And of course, I'm never talking bad about any competition or anything else, but we did try to make something which were more scalable than what champagne is right now, because champagne is, um, at, you know, currently there are a lot of them are out of stock that have had a few, you know, uh, bad vintages because of frost. And the good thing about Cava is, you know, they produce 26, 26 million cases of, of Cava every single year, and there's enough for everybody. And of course, then you get back to quality. Um, let's talk about where you are in the marketplace and how the marketplace has responded even before your 100 point proof award um, validation. Yeah. Where are you in the world? Where are you having great success? I think in regards, you know, I think we've all been to some, you know, hard times and you probably heard these uh, several times that, you know, the, the COVID uh, did not, uh, you know, made any room for celebration. And we launched this back in, uh, in uh, 2020 in January or February where we had an incredible, uh, uh, you know, received, you know, the consumer re received it so well. We were blowing up at the Fountain Blues, the SLS, uh, you know, the W's in, in Miami and getting into retail and more. And suddenly, of course, everything closed because of COVID. And I got to you know, spend too much time on that. But then there was not the you know a right time to actually relaunch or launch anything when you know uh, people were losing their load bonds they were you know struggling to get through so we said let's just keep calm make sure that we wait uh, until COVID is over and then we uh, get everybody uh, back in place so right now uh, we're seeing uh, you know fantastic interactions with the Hard Rock uh, hotels and casinos uh, you know first of all it's incredible uh, resorts uh, we're seeing uh, incredible uh, reorders at the the smaller retail uh, stores we're seeing at the Club 23 in Miami, and we're just going into a national distribution in Q2, and uh, and I think you know the the rest of the United States and the world will uh, will be able to taste it uh, during uh, 2022. Well, I have to tell you two things. The first is I love that you said that the wine speaks for itself. Race ipsa loquitur. The thing speaks for itself. I love that you gave us something so extraordinary that it speaks for itself and the judging and the validity of what happens at the Proof Awards when buyers who literally are professional tasters and judges met something so remarkable that we get the validation like, yes, this is that good. Yes, this is that good. You absolutely have to tell us how it feels to be one of the few Century Award winners that we have had in this category and um, how you shared the news with your team. I think, first of all, uh, the Proof Awards is, I believe, one of the most uh, 
you know, prestigious competition in the beverage industry. And I, I know how hard it is to actually, uh, you know, get a high score. And getting back to the, you know, the Century Club, when we're talking about the sign and everything else and how I brought, you know, that success back to the team, is that, you know, I think we have proof of quality and I think mm-hmm. we have proof of, of marketing concept. And, you know, when, when the industry, you know, we were sure that we had something really good because we test everything inside out, but getting the proof awards and the century award and double gold was for us, you know, just reconfirming that, you know, what we have done so far is just, uh, you know, to the point and, and, uh, you know, everybody was thrilled. And of course, you will see that in all of our presentation decks that the proof awards, you know, is, you know, on the first or second page in our presentations. Let, let's talk a little bit about the fact that Food and Beverage Magazine, with our 14 million monthly readers, is a real um, gathering place for information for our industry. And with our publication, Proof Magazine, we have an equal reach. The industry is very interested in what's happening. And with products and new products that come and earn these prizes, they get a chance to have almost like a a sorting, a vetting, a validation happening. And so I think it's really important to talk to our industry. And I appreciate you being so candid about some of the factors that have gone into this from a from a business standpoint. One of the questions that I have um, with a still wine and food pairing, it was always a, the domain of fine dining. But one of the things that was always challenging is if you had champagne or sparkling wine in a high volume setting and you weren't in a celebration mode, let's say an anniversary dinner, an engagement dinner, birthday dinner, that the amount of time and and everything that would go into it was prohibitive from a high volume standpoint. You couldn't just keep opening with a two or three minute opening, anything with that kind of corking and et cetera. And I would imagine that a large format, which is now 10 pours, maybe 11 out of a bottle, you're going to make it much easier for me to make this available by the glass. And in doing so, you are going to introduce a whole new generation and population of bubbly, sparkling wine sippers, wine sippers to something that they might not have had a chance to discover. Otherwise, to me, that's one of the decisions you made that's utterly genius. So Jennifer, Jennifer, you are hired, you know, because that's the sales sales pitch we are using, you know, to all the all the different restaurants as well. You know, uh, you know, a magnum, everybody says it's you know, it's a big bottle. But if you look at it, you know, if you're true to three people, everybody going gonna go through it. And if you're able at a restaurant and you have, you know, hundred clients coming in, you want to serve by the glass. And why don't you serve them something of a higher quality yeah. and 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 make sure that, you know, they they indulge in the product, and then uh, and then you will get the reorders when they sit down and, and order the bottles afterwards. If somebody doesn't take a sip of this and say, "I want this again," something's very wrong with their palate, <laughs> not with your wine. I'm just saying. <laughs> let's Thank talk you so a much. Little bit. Let's talk a little bit about pairing. Yes. Again, I I think the great cuisines of of the world include the cuisines of both Spain, France, and Italy. And sparkling wines are certainly in the most elevated expressions. But there is something in my mind and to my opinion, really richly aligned with Spanish cuisine and pairing the food with a sparkling wine. I think it goes very well. Would you talk a little bit about Provocativo as a pairing companion to food? And where have you, as you've traveled around introducing people to provocativo found the best links and pairings uh you know i'm 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 probably not the, the right one to talk about the pairing thing you know i'm i'm the one who's make sure the quality is good and making sure that the you know the, the brand stands out but i i do believe that if you look at you know uh, when you consume things and when you drink and when you eat you feel you know uh, you know bubbles is cleaning your palate you get you know when you eat if that's a fish or, uh, or anything else, you, you 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 get the sparkling in the mouth, and you actually taste. Sometimes I believe that you know some of the food you eat is actually tasting better. And and you, you, I I say to everybody, you know, try it with you know your salad, try it with your fish, try it with your chicken, and try it with the you know the, the tapas, especially in Spain where you have a lot of different flavors and 
and seafood as well. So, but again, I'm not the expert on the pairing, but I do believe that bubbles goes with a lot of different uh, cuisines around the world. And, you know, uh, and people should try it. And it's, uh, you know, cleans your palate, gets you in a good mood. And, you know, that uh, as well has an impact on how you actually view the, the, the thing you're eating. Well, I didn't necessarily win my James Beard Award for my palate, but I will say it could have very easily just have been for my palate as any other word that ever came out of my mouth. Because I've been blessed to have the equivalent of what a lot of food people are lucky to have, which is that sort of perfect pitch, right? So I actually will feel very comfortable telling you I have found lots of things that go brilliantly well with Provocativo. But my favorite, my two favorites... I'm going to start with the easiest one and the one that really delighted me and surprised me the most. And I would urge people to try this in their own homes and with their own friends. One of my all-time favorites is Bubbles with a clean cheeseburger and unsalted French fries. And if you are lucky to get good French fries and you have just a tiny kiss of a truffle salt on it, that will to my mind, be one of the great pairings with bubbles you'll ever have. It sounds simple, practically plebeian, but it's exquisite when it's done wonderfully well. I also think that bubbles go incredibly well with a Sunday brunch moment. I don't ever mix it with orange juice. I know some people like that. Personally, I just like the clean of the bubbles. And at brunch time, I serve the provocativo, actually in a slightly bigger, almost Spanish red wine style glass with ice cubes. And it just gives that cool and it just really lends itself to the flavors of a breakfast table, especially if it includes smoked salmon. Fantastic. And I, you know, I like you pointed out, you know, the bigger glasses and, you know, uh, you know, add the ice cube in there, you know, it's fantastic. You know, the flavors comes out in a completely different way and you, you to the points. And also the bigger glasses, yeah, it's more generous in regards to, you know, what you drink. You don't want small glasses when you celebrate or enjoying lunch, you know. That's, uh, that's an important part of it. Well, I don't know if you can still hear me, but I wanted to say yes. thank you very much for being with us today. And I want to ask you one last question. What is the house toast? of Provocativo. What do you mean? The house toast, what do you mean? <laughs> so the house toast is, you know, uh, size matters and toast to life. There we go. Congratulations on the 100 Point Century Award. I'm thrilled to congratulate you in person to meet you. And I will really look forward to clinking our glasses together in person, in real life very, very soon. Everybody, where you can find Provocativo is which stores are your favorite North American stores where we have big distribution and everybody can find you? And I will tell you that in about next time you're on. You know, we're just sorting everything out with the, the big chains. And I think we're going to be avail available in about 42 states uh, in the next uh, three months. So uh, wait until we're done with the negotiations and you will actually get it uh, uh, all of it everywhere. But so far, go online order it at provocativo.com and you can have it in your, your inbox in just, uh, you know, a couple of days. Cheers and congratulations. Thank you so much for your time and this wonderful product. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Have a good one. Whether you are thinking about becoming a restaurateur or you are already in the business, Michael Pulitz has written a must read. The Food and Beverage Magazine's Guide to Restaurant Success. Pick up your copy today at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Books A Million, or wherever fine books are sold.